Well, good morning, you guys, and finally, I'm getting around to filming this video that I have been wanting to film for you guys, I think well over a week now. I ordered for the first time Baker Creek Seeds, never ordered from the, them before, um, so this is the first, my first order. I will acknowledge some of you guys shared with me um, some of the controversy around Baker Creek and their employees. Um, I have my own feelings about that. I share the same thoughts and feelings that many of you have regarding that. Um, but I don't know the truth. I don't know, you guys. Oh. We will save that topic for another day. For now, we're just going to enjoy the seeds, okay? We're just going to enjoy the seeds. So, we're going to open this up. <laughs> and kind of like rip it open here. All right. Ooh. All right. Oh, I'm going to cover up my address here. But look at how it comes in a nice little, like, envelope like that. Okay. I'm going to pull out everything that I ordered. They do give you um, a itemized receipt, which I will hold over my information on that. So they do give you a nice receipt on everything that you ordered. All right, and so now I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna add to my garden this year. So I ordered, oh, look at, they have, the, they have like little bands on them to keep them from falling loose. That's nice. I like the packaging. Packaging <laughs> sometimes for me is everything. So, all right, let me get you focused. Okay, first off, we have rutabagas. Um, I love making homemade pasties. It's a big thing here in Michigan. I have a recipe that my dad gave me, and um, I'll, I'll leave the link up above of a video that my dad did for me when he was here um, helping me and taking care of me. Um, and I love, my dad can cook. He can throw down in the kitchen. So rutabagas, I, I'm hoping to gift him some of those for his um, homemade pasties. Stevia. I've never grown stevia before. And so this really interests me. I really want to create an area where I am going to be growing medicinal herbs. I want a medicinal herb garden, you guys. It doesn't have to be big. It can be small, right? It doesn't have to be big, but that's what I want to do. So stevia. I also got some Bonnie Best. <laughs> I saw these. My grandpa used to grow these in his garden and I miss my grandpa so much. So I got some Bonnie Best in honor of my grandpa. Um, bee balm or wild bergamot. Uh, this is going to uh, definitely be going in the medicinal uh, flower garden there. Uh, pearl yarrow, double diamond pearl yarrow, lemon bee balm. So we're going to put some lemon bee balm in that garden. And I got some carrots. These are Koto Reds. All right, on to packaging number two here. We've got some Boston pickling cucumbers. Of course, this to make homemade pickles. I grabbed some little finger carrots. I have grown these before. They're awesome. Mina likes to pull them right out of the ground, wash them with the garden hose and eat them. <laughs> she really likes carrots and peanut butter like her daddy used to. So definitely growing some, uh, some of those. Sugar baby watermelons. I have some of these seeds, but you can never have too many, I don't think. Um, so I grabbed another package of those. Saint Valerie carrots. These looked really good when I was reading up on them. They are a very old French variety. Handsome, large, bright orange, 10 to 12 inch roots, smooth, sweet, and tender. Look at these carrots, you guys. <laughs> these are my free. Look at that. So let's see. Bread in India, heat tolerant and extremely rich in antioxidants, perfect for hot summers. Well, we don't really have hot summers here in northern Michigan, so let's let's hope that these grow for me. And then I also bought some uh, coneflower uh, in the green twister color. And again, this will go in my um, medicinal flower garden. Okay, I grabbed some brandy wine tomatoes, a great potato leafed variety from 1885, the most popular heirloom vegetable. I think, it, is it potato leafed? So they must have big leaves on them. A favorite of many gardeners, large fruit and superb 
flavor. I'm excited. Look how big that sucker is. Okay, here's another free seed. They sent me radish, Japanese wasabi radish. Ooh, 60 days to maturity. This round-shaped Japanese radish has intensely pungent, spicy flavor. Perfect for lovers of wasabi. Chefs and experimental home cooks will be delighted to play with the sensational root crop. Ooh, my older boys will love this. Um, radishes are fantastic in place of potatoes. I don't know if you've ever tried it, but if you cut up radishes and you fry them in a pan with some onion and some garlic, some salt, some pepper, they taste, <laughs> they taste very similar to fried potatoes, if not better, because they've got a little bite to them. So these fried up in a pan, that's going to be fantastic. My older boys are going to love that. Okay, something else for the uh, medicinal herb garden is uh, echinacea, right? Can't go without echinacea. Cucumber, Market More 76. These, again, are to pickle. I got some of these really pretty rutabagas, and I know my dad is going to love this because they're just so pretty. 85 to 95 days for maturity. Delicious purple tinge variety from the UK. Oh, oh so pretty. And then I got classic beef steak. Again, my grandpa used to, um, he used to grow the Bonnie Best and the beef steak. And these always went on our hamburgers at night. So uh, we had sliced tomatoes on my grandpa's dinner table every single night. And so I want my kids to grow up with that same memory. So that's an ode to my grandpa. And last but not least, look at this carrot, you guys. Black Nubula. <sighs> Darkest carrot av available. Delicious raw, cooked, or juiced. <gasps> so pretty. Okay, so those are my seeds from Baker Creek. Um, and I'm super excited to add these to my garden this year. And I'm going to show you now really quickly what I bought to kind of stay organized a bit. Because you guys know I have two brain injuries that I'm recovering from but uh it's just it's just a part of me now right it's just a part of me so I really find myself needing to be organized in order to remember everything so I found this on Amazon it's a garden planner and organizer and it's it's a hardcover um a lot of the things in here you have to print off okay so I'm going to give you a heads up on that right now if you don't have a printer or any means to print this off this might not work for you um, I have a printer of course because I'm a homeschooling mom so it wasn't a big deal for me uh, but I am loving this planner and setting it up I just kind of set it up and I'm, I'm I'm getting ready to to put it into use so it gives you a lot of like growing information it does come with um, a moon calendar which I guess is really handy when it comes to uh, growing and harvesting um, so that was really interesting that's totally new to me I also picked up uh, something separate and I'll, I'll leave a link to all these things down below this is called Clyde's garden uh, planner and what's nice is according to when your last frost is and for me it's June 1st it gives me an approximate time of when to start my plants on the opposite side there's a fall gar garden planner so this is going to come in handy for me um, when it comes time to uh, get all my things all my seeds started so in this book there is a like sorry if there's a glare there is a planner here on when to plant this is approximate right and then they also have things that you can plant together. So it says, plant these vegetables together to make the most use of your space and detour plants. So that's really helpful. Of course, uh, there's like a little guide here of getting rid of pests. Vegetables for patio garden, vegetables that are good for plot gardening. 
and then you go into um, these tabs. So they give you stickers, so you can make your own or you can use the ones that they have for you. I'll quickly go through the ones that they had, um, and then I just put them in order the way that they work best for me. So spring, um, of course, I am gonna start with spring. You can start with winter if you want. Um, I think my sister is starting with winter. Uh, but there's spring, summer, autumn, winter, and these stickers uh, come separate and you can put them on whatever tab you want. Then I have herbs, annuals, perennials, trees, because I am planting, I have some uh, fruit trees out there already and I plan on adding some more. Shrubs, climbers, creepers, and then there's a couple of other things that I'm I'm probably not going to be using. This is probably all that I'll I'll actually need. So I just added these just to have them. But the last one that I'm using is the tab that's called My Garden. And then um, this is where I'm going to put all of the papers to keep track of what I'm actually putting in my garden. And then I will separate them out according to the season and make copies of everything for the season. So these are the papers that they'll give you to download and print off. This one is um, visits and inspirations. So if you're going to somebody's house and they have a beautiful garden and you wanna snag some ideas from them, if you go to um, you know, a public garden, anything like that, anything that you wanna just take notes and keep ideas. If you're watching YouTube and you wanna take some ideas off of different people here on YouTube for their garden, you can, you can kind of jot it down here. They also give you a printout for tasks for spring, summer, fall, and winter. So um, anything that you need to do for like cleanup or organization, um, things that I can write down here so that I don't forget to do them. There's also a printout for growing season. So goals for the year, soil maintenance and improvements, along with your soil pH if you keep track of that, common pests and diseases for your particular garden, and then any kind of reflections you wanna keep note of. They also have a printout for a garden layout. So this is the area that you will use to actually draw out and plan your garden, and I'm really excited about this part, even though I can't draw very well. <laughs> I'm excited, excited to actually get my um, plan on paper. And then these, I, I printed out quite a bit of these. This um, printout is called My Plants. So here's a name of your plant, water requirements, position, months of interest of how long um, you plan on growing this. There is a box so that you can add a picture to it. Or um, what I'm probably gonna do is probably gonna cut out, I will probably cut out the envelope picture and then just paste it on there is what I'm planning on doing. Characteristics of the plant, notes, the plant location and the date that you planted it, which I think is really gonna be helpful for me. Okay, another printout that they have is for your compost bin, your compost log. I do not have a compost yet, but I plan on making one. I did buy the book, Let It Rot, the Gardener's Guide to Composting. I also have another book that's coming tomorrow. If you guys are interested in seeing that, let me know and I'll show you. Um, tomorrow I'm gonna do an unboxing video for you guys on a sourdough starter kit that I bought. Um, I asked you guys over on Facebook if you wanted to see an, an unboxing video on that and you guys said yes. So I can include the books that I got because I've got some uh, garden books coming tomorrow too. So I can film that for you. If you want, let me know down below. Um, so here is a tracker that I can keep when I start building my um, compost up. So it's a bin number, which I think I'm just gonna have one big bin, so I don't think I'm actually gonna need that. But the date started, the date turned, and when it's ready to use. So that's gonna come in handy for me so that I remember. Another printout is called the sewing guide. So here is um, an area that you can uh, write out everything that you're sewing and then um, the months of the year. So this is just a nice checklist way of keeping track of everything. Another printout is pests and vermins and then the year. So every year you can keep track of what pest as far as animal and insects go 
the plants that it affected and your solution. So you can keep a nice record of what works and what doesn't work. They give you a nice little background um, to take pictures and, and, and kind of glue your pictures in here of your garden and you can keep track of how your garden progressed throughout the years. I really like that. They also have a printout for plant history and of course they give you an area to write out the year. So the plant name, the date you planted it, the type of plant it is, the purchase location, which I always forget where I bought certain things. So this will be really nice for me to be able to keep track of. Whether it was seeds or a seedling, which is nice because sometimes I buy plants from um, the uh, nursery up the road. So it's nice to be able to remember and remind myself whether or not I started it or if it was something that I purchased. Fertilizer used, watering, pests, your blooming date and how much it yielded, and then your harvest date. And this is, there's two of them on each page there. And of course, if you print it out double-sided, which you can do, uh, you can get four of these to one page. So I printed out quite a bit of these. And then, last but not least, there's a recipe printout. <laughs> so this is really nice. So the title, so your prep time, how many it serves, the title of your recipe, and my garden ingredients and then it leaves you an area for your method and then when you serve it because there's certain dishes that I use fresh veggies right out of the garden so I only make it during the summer so here you can circle whether uh, or not you make it in the spring summer fall or winter right so that's a nice way to keep track now in the back of the of this book they give you uh, four divided uh, protector sheets. This is for seed packets. So you just slide in your seed packets just like that. And then they also give you page protectors that are like solid one pagers so that any of the printouts that you want to protect in um, page protectors, you can do that if you want to do that. Okay, in the back of the book, a year in your garden. So just kind of a quick breakdown, crop rotation. So all in all, I wanted something that I could reuse every year, something that would help keep me organized, um, especially with my, with my brain injuries. And um, something that I wasn't just writing in a notebook because for me, just writing in a notebook it, it feels very overwhelming to me. So this gives me um, everything that I need. I don't have to think about it. All I have to do is fill out the papers, place it in the tab that it belongs in, and I've got something nice, neat, organized, and something that I can pull out every year to use. I love that. So what I did, um, and I'm gonna show you quickly, this is how I organized my seeds. Now I had that seed bin that I showed you guys, but it was way too crowded and I couldn't really scan through my seeds. So what I did is I decided to put them in three inch binders that of course I have because I'm a homeschooling mom, right? So um, I got these off of Amazon. Like I said, I'll try to leave as many links down below as I can for you guys. Um, I bought extra page protectors that are divided into four and um, and then I organized all my seeds. So uh, I have my flowers first, and then we go into the herbs. And this is how I chose to organize it, you guys. So that if I'm looking for a specific seed, I can just come in here uh, and look and pull out a package of seeds that I need. So this is how I chose to do it. You know, everybody's different. I did leave some empty spaces because I knew I was buying more seeds from Baker Creek and um, and a probably a few more locally. Um, but this is how I organized it. And then, so I had so many seeds, I needed a second book. So this is how I'm kind of organizing my seeds just to, just to be able to find things a little bit easier for myself. And, um, and then I use the bin for uh, other seeds uh, that are bigger that don't fit into these books very easily. So, um, let's see, I've got a couple more books I can show you really quick. I picked this one up from, these are all from Amazon because it's just easier for me to order and have it delivered. Um, 
This one is the Old Farmer's Almanac Vegetables Garden Handbook. This is really, really nice book. It basically has everything that you, everything that I'm growing in my garden, probably you as well. It, um, it's very basic, but full of great information, but really an easy read. It's an easy read. So I got that. And then, of course, I'm new to greenhouse gardening. So I got a greenhouse gardener's manual. I also have another greenhouse book coming tomorrow. Let me know if you want me to show you that one as well. Um, but I thought this might have a lot of tips and tricks for me as far as <laughs> moving into a greenhouse. Although I'm, I don't plan on growing anything really in the greenhouse other than uh, starting my seeds, giving me a place to start all my seeds instead of in my kitchen, which creates a mess of dirt and everything else. Um, plus I've kind of outgrown it. I need, I would need so many racks. I would, I would need like my whole kitchen. Um, but I really got the greenhouse because I, you know, I, I'm living in Northern Michigan. I'll scan you out the, the window real quick. Okay. There, there's out looking out, uh, into my future garden there. And, um, as you see <laughs> where we're getting snow again. So the growing season for me up here in northern lower Michigan is really short. So the greenhouse, which I'll scan you over and show you that beyond my black stone, which I hope to make a lot of videos on this year. <laughs> There's my greenhouse. So um, my whole plan for the greenhouse is to help me start earlier and grow things longer. Uh, even if it's simple things like just herbs and things that I use daily. So I'm really hoping that that helps me out um, because our growing season where I live is so short. Our uh, last frost is June 1st, if that gives you any idea of how short our growing season is. So I'm hoping that this helps me. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, you guys. This was a, a fun video to film for you guys. I was so excited about going through those seeds. I hope you guys have a great weekend. And uh, let me know down in the comments if you wanna see an unboxing video tomorrow. Um, I also have a new KitchenAid scale coming. So I've been using a, a little $10 scale for like the past, I don't know, seven, seven years, eight years. And it probably, it finally gave out on me. So I needed a new kitchen scale. So I've got that coming too. So if you guys want to see an unboxing video of that tomorrow, let me know and I'll film that for you. All right. And with that, you guys take care. God bless. And I'll see you soon. Let me throw this in too at the very end. Seed Saving Bible. If you guys want to know uh, anything about seed saving, which I am completely new to, you might want to pick this up. This book is full of great information. And uh, it's there's, there's no real pictures in it. It's just information. But it's an easy read. It's nice large print. I love it. So, the Seed Saving Bible. Just in case you need it. <laughs> Thought I'd throw that in there. Alright guys, see you soon.